Serious Survivor here. Today we're going to talk about the Russian GP5 gas mask. This is a popular gas mask among preppers and others, mainly due to the fact of its cost. This is a relatively inexpensive mask and you can get it for anywhere between 10 to 20 to maybe 30 bucks online. I will leave some links in the description below so that people can find these masks should they decide they want one. Before we look at a live demonstration or proper usage of the mask, then we're going to talk about some of the technical specifications and the history of the mask. The GP5 gas mask is a Russian or Soviet Union made NBC gas mask with a single filter. This device was issued to the Soviet population beginning in 1962. These masks were produced until 1989 and distributed extensively. This is a very lightweight mask. It weighs only 1.09 kilograms or 2.42 pounds without a filter. The GP5 can operate in all weather and withstand temperatures from negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 237 degrees Fahrenheit. This model design, the GP5, has two airtight sealed glass eyepieces. Uh, they were originally designed and produced for protection from radioactive fallout around the time of the Cold War, and they were distributed and kept in most fallout shelters throughout Russia. These were also tested in Poland and other areas to see if they have the proper NBC protective capabilities, and it was concluded that under the most extreme circumstances that these masks do not hold up for long periods of time. They are still a favorite of many people because they're very common, they do work, and the price is right on these. The entire GP5 kit consists of the SHM-62 face piece, a GP5 filter, a bag for carrying, and anti-fogging lenses. If they were produced between the original dates of 1962 until 1989, then the filters have been found to contain asbestos as much as 7.5%. So it's a very good idea if you do have some old or original filters for these to not use those, to do away with those. Although there is a large debate as to whether or not these filters are dangerous, some say the design of the filter itself prevents the asbestos from being inhaled. But this is a 40 millimeter cartridge, so any standard NATO 40 millimeter will fit quite well onto this mask. The GP5 can be worn with a filter attached directly to the mask or with a 40 millimeter extension hose and the hose would be to give you a longer range so the filter could be kept in the pouch while you wear the mask so that there's less mass pulling down on the mask itself to extend the lifetime of the mask and to prevent these seals from being broken. The GP5 was issued to the civilian populations and the armed forces of the Soviet Union and its Warsaw Pact allies. And among the allies, this type of mask was given several different designations and many improvements have been made on it through the years. But these are relatively easy to find. You can find them on eBay, on Amazon, and for $20 or less, it's a good thing to keep. But keep in mind, these are not a long-term solution to anything. The problem with these masks is the material that they are made out of, although it is durable and it can withstand extreme temperatures, over time it will stretch and it relies simply on its elastic capabilities to maintain the seal around the underneath your chin and the back of your head. Depending on the filter types that you choose, there are many powerful filters on the market. Some of the most powerful are the CBRN 40 millimeter NATO filters, and these can be a little on the expensive side. I have seen them range anywhere from $8 up to almost $100 each, depending on the capability and the lifetime of the particular filter. Now keep that in mind, no matter what type of mask you're wearing, the filter is the most important part. If the mask has a proper seal and is airtight, then the filter is what actually determines how many contaminated particles may or may not enter your mask. Now this was rated NBC when it was first produced, which stands for Nuclear, Biological, and Chemical. The purpose behind a gas mask and other items of this type and design is simply to keep the irradiated particles from landing on you and from being inhaled or ingested. If you are in high levels of radiation, this mask will not prevent the radiation from damaging your head, your skin, the tissue, your brain, etc. These simply prevent you from breathing in these contaminated particles and ingesting these contaminated particles. They do work efficiently and if taken care of, these can last for a while. But remember, keep in mind the main thing is the filter that you would choose and the upkeep of your mask. Make sure you have the right size. It doesn't stretch too much because the more pressure and the more we stretch this material, then the less elastic it becomes and the less of a seal we will get as we wear one of these devices. 
Well, let's look now at the practical side of it and put one on and talk about the different features of it. And here's the official issue bag that these come in if you buy the whole kit. When you order these old military surplus sometimes, the setup comes uh, similar to what we see here. And the mask itself is wrapped, uh, it's new old stock as they said. And this one, uh, they coat them in baby powder and wrap them up like this to remain airtight and that helps preserve the materials that are in it. But, but that baby powder, it's hard to get off that smell. You gotta get it off really good because if you put this mask on and that baby powder is still in there a little bit, it gets all in your nose and into your lungs and it, you'll be coughing it up for a little while, I, I know. So let's look at one, we've already opened them, washed up a little bit. And here we see the GP5, and this one I have a 40 millimeter hose attachment on it. The hose attachment can come in handy if you have a chest rig or something that can hold your filter. You have to be careful with the hose though because it can get punctures or tears in it, and of course you're gonna be contaminated at that point. But the construction of it is fairly decent. The two eye glasses, and these are a pretty good seal. You know, looking at them, I've worn this several times, and they are airtight. As you can see how they're how they're formed here, the hose attachment. And that's one thing I like about this. It it is the standard 40 millimeter NATO, but it's a tight fit. It's a really tight fit for that 40 millimeter. But you do get a good seal uh, with the filter on it. Decent mask. Construction. Look inside. Filter. It gets a pretty good seal, but this is the parts that you have to worry about around the edges here. If any of these get rips, tears, and after continuous use, this is going to stretch. This is the part that's going to stretch, and it's going to allow particles, you know, to get underneath or in between this and your skin. So there's, you're not going to wear these every day for a year or two or something like that. You know, these are meant to be replaced. So Now, if you're going to use these, though, the original filters that come with them, this is what I recommend you replace them with, and this is a CBRN filter. This type of filter will filter out just about anything known to man and uh, it's very good. This will prevent you from taking in any types of chemicals, any types of biological hazards, any types of disease, uh, you know, radiological particles, things such as that. With one of these, I do recommend skipping over the uh, standard issue filter because these things are pretty old. 1989 was when they ended production on these. So if they are old stock, then you figure it was around that time. So a long time ago, but this is a decent mask. For the price, you can't really beat it. And if you notice how it's formed here, you have through here. That's a sort of a solid part. Good look at the filter on it there. Decent mask that will protect you for short periods of time, not extended periods of time. Through scientific testing, they said these are truly not recommended for more than 24 hours of continuous use. And at that point, you're going to want to take them off, clean them, inspect them, make sure the seals are still good, make sure it's not stretched. Well, let's see how it fits. Well, that's it for the GP5 gas mask. It's a fairly decent mask. It's something that's not as durable and not as heavy duty as some of the masks on the market, but it'll do in a pinch. I uh, hope the information was informative and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks a lot for watching. And for now, Sears Survivor, out.